So we're uh, back, Senate Government Operations. We took a little five minute um, jumping jack break here and um, now we're back and we're going to be looking at um, the changes that House Government Operations and potentially floor amendments are making to S-15 so that we can better understand them. We went through them, I believe it was yesterday and had some, um, or maybe it was fr Friday, I honestly can't remember, but we have gone through them. We had some concerns and I think that Will and um, Chris are here with some explanations for us. I think our three, as I remember it, one was the 25, dropping off 25 ballots. One was uh, around the um, uh, notification by the town clerk, by town clerks for, um, Cured. what is that called? Defective Cured. ballots? Curing. Defective Curing. ballots. And the third was um, the electronics at the poll, having to have electronics at the poll. Uh, and the other one was around the um, report that was coming back um, that seemed to assume that we should have a voter identification system. So if I remember right, those were the issues that were brought up and then we don't know what amendments are being proposed now. So if you can just help us understand those a little bit better now that you've heard our concerns. Yeah, sure, Ma Madam Chair. Um, mm -hmm. If possible, I'd like to have Will go first on this one and talk to you about the electronic return, the one that Senator Collimore yep. pointed out to us yesterday. I too have okay. trouble remembering what day <laughs> we last talked about this. Um, but Will can, can get into that. And, and just, you know, one of the three amendments being proposed on the floor today is to fix that very oh. oversight on the House side. And I think that's what's coming up uh, shortly on the House floor. But I'll and I think that amendment that's coming up was due entirely to Senator Colomar's eagle eye. I think that's correct. That puts me in a funny position, Madam Chair. <laughs> it, it does, doesn't it? It does. It, it does, but you're up to it. Thank you. Okay, Will, do you want to? Sure. As Chris mentioned, there were three amendments proposed on the floor today. I think the anticipation is that only one of them will uh, pass, and that's the one that we brought forward to address the issue that Senator Collimore raised. So I think that will be the only change you will have seen from what um, Ameren walked through yesterday. And that's really simple. And I don't know if you guys have it in front of you or not, but if you go to the main house page, interestingly, they have those three amendments right at the front and center on the top of their main house page. Okay. And it's, and it's the McCarthy amendment. So what do you mean the main house page? You mean current house calendar? No, if you just click like on the top bar of your thing on house. Yeah, yeah got it. The house homepage. Yeah. That's where I just found it. Well, you have to go to their current calendar, right? I think you have to go to current calendar or. No, just click on House of Representatives. I did. Okay. House overview. Wait. Overview. Oh, oh, house oh, over, over there. there. That's a second click. Oh, okay. And then it says floor amendments. And it says Representative Toff or two. Two. The second one is McCarthy's, which is the one that will happen. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. <clears throat> and that's the one addressing the concerned Senator Collimore raised, and you'll see it's very simple. Oh, okay. It adds a, a clause at the end of that paragraph we were looking about, about return of the affidavit. And it basically just sets out that electronically it has to come in by the close of business the day before. Right. The ones that can be returned by the election day or by mail or in person. And the only thing I would note, if you're at all concerned about the mail return there of an affidavit is to remind you that um, absentee ballots themselves can be returned by mail on the day of the election. So the clerks already are, are checking their mail on the day of the election one way or another, and we'll see affidavits also. But this okay. essentially means that if a person doesn't do an electronic um, return of that affidavit to the clerk before they close, check their email and the election management system on the day before the election, then it would be late. So Senator Collimore, does that answer your concern? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. So we don't need to 
um, if that passes, that'll take care of one of our questions. It was a good catch and I took the hit over there and apologized to them for not having seen it on the first run through. They didn't see it either, so. <laughs> I was gonna say, it wasn't your fault. <laughs> um, okay, so the other one was the 25 ballots. Do you wanna talk about that a little bit? I can start off with that one, Will. Um, that one kind of took us by surprise, I will, I will say. We didn't really discuss it. We discussed security of uh, the election and the election systems in Vermont in general. We talked about the lack of any evidence of, of voter fraud, how we went through 2020, how we didn't see uh, any, any double voting. We had that one instance that I think we talked to you about. Um, and we prosecuted that, the, the um, attorney general's office prosecuted that. Um, and there was some concern expressed about how in other states, lots of people, um, not lots of people, there are certain groups that might go around and collect larger numbers of ballots and turn them in. And the, you know, the counter to that is it's, it's helping people vote in a lot of ways. There are valid reasons for picking up your neighbor's ballots or helping people who might not be able to get down to the polling place or even to the, to the mailbox to deliver their ballots. Um, so on the House side, um, there was some discussion of, of so-called ballot harvesting, even though we have no evidence of it happening in the state of Vermont. Um, that was put in there, I think, to help get support of some of the other members of the committee. As you may have noticed, it was an 11-0 vote out of uh, out of house government operations. And I think that helped it get a strong vote on the floor uh, on second reading. Um, we think it's, it, uh, it's a, a provision that was unnecessary. We didn't suggest it, um, but we thought we could go along with it. We could live with it. We don't see it happening. We don't think it's gonna stop anything from happening, but maybe it just kind of puts us on record saying uh, mass collection of ballots, 25 or more is something that we don't think is a good idea uh, and that people shouldn't do. And again, we also, you talked a little bit about yesterday, I listened to your testimony with, with Will there about how um, it's important that we don't ask town clerks to enforce this. They can't keep track. They can't keep watch over uh, their secure ballot drop boxes. It's not on them to, to, to enforce this, um, but it is going to be in the law and sort of a, a message to people out there or organizations that they shouldn't be collecting more than 25 ballots. So this is kind of going to be like um, many of our campaign laws, um, uh, complaint driven. If my neighbor uh, is, is watching me and says that I delivered 26 ballots because she knows who I picked them up from, then she would file a complaint. But um, I'm not going to report myself if I deliver 26 and the town clerk isn't going to keep track of it. So it really is just, as you said, uh, kind of a public message. Correct. And the fact that we're sending these out with postage prepaid back, there's just not going to be a big need for anyone to collect and, and return a lot of ballots. People can drop them in the mailbox very easily. Mm -hmm. Senator Clarkson. Have you had a single complaint of this in Vermont? No. Well, I, for one, certainly wouldn't want this bill to be delayed over this issue. I, I think I, I don't want it delayed, but I, I think it's it's completely unnecessary and is pandering to an extreme view of things. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about uh, about it. I, I, because I think there are as many good instances of its use of, of conceivably having more people bring things in from a, an assisted living facility, from a neighborhood, as we've discussed. I, I, if it's unnecessary and we've had no incidences of this being a problem, I don't know why we overreach. It's like a piece of overreach. I, if I can, we do many things to um, as compromise. And um, I know that this is, my guess is that um, many places that have um, say 30 or 40 residences won't bring them in anyway, they'll mail them from their resident. Um, that's the way I know the assisted living places down here, some of them do it. They, they 
mail them in and it uh, gives the actually the the residents the um, more independence because they can just put it in the in the outgoing mail for the for the place itself and in, so they don't they don't actually deliver them to the town clerk's office most of them I don't think but anyway so Senator you know, White uh, yeah I would just add really quickly to Senator Clarkson I, I think that's that is what you want to be thinking about that's a that's a good um, concern to have of course and it's the one we've had the whole time but as I thought through this limit more um, I think it's a I think it's a reasonable middle ground in that what we don't want to do is is implement this kind of protection if it would do a lot of harm that we don't want it to do. And the harm we talked about is the instances you were talking about of neighborhood gathering or assisted living homes. And I just don't think that there's gonna be a lot of people who are looking to collect more than 25 ballots for their neighbors or folks in a home. Folks in a home, I think it'd be pretty easy to split that between two or three staff members in the home if there were in fact more than 25 ballots. So I just, in weighing the, the harms and then you do, you send a message that if anybody ever were to consider engaging in the kind of large scale fraud that we certainly have seen no evidence of to this point, this would at least be a deterrent of some kind to that. Um, so I think, I think it's a reasonable compromise policy wise. Senator Rahm? I don't think we have to resolve this this year, but I've always felt um, that this is all the more reason to allow satellite ballot boxes on places like college campuses because mm -hmm. You know, I would collect 50 or more voter registration forms in a week and bring them to City Hall when I was a student running for the legislature. So, you know, I often have advocated just have a ballot box in the student center so people can drop off their own ballot. That is a way to stop, quote unquote, ballot harvesting from happening, but ensure that people who don't, you know, can't get to a ballot box or don't know where it is can still have their ballot counted rather than making it inconvenient and stopping someone else from collecting them all and bringing them down like from a university or a group setting. Couldn't, wouldn't that be a lot? Uh, there's nothing to disallow that now. Burlington could. Yes, we put it on municipal property. The ballot boxes have to be on municipal property. Unless there isn't um, an appropriate municipal um, property within that district. Well, if you're talking about people with mobility issues or you're talking about students who have, you know, other challenges getting to the library or to City Hall, you know, it, it just feels like you should, it should be up to a municipality to say, yeah, you can have a satellite box at this large affordable housing complex or the student center. Right. And I'm not sure the language is that flexible right now. So we'll have to dig into that. I, or review it anyway, because I, I think it's a little more restrictive than that. Is that yeah. right, Bill? Yeah, that's right. Senator Rahm, yeah. really quickly, and I think, like you said, we, we're not going to go into that entire discussion now, but just for you to start thinking about the, the nut to crack there, the challenge to me is that that is going to really push us towards some kind of central processing potentially, which would be okay if that's where it needs to, but it's figuring out how to make sure that the right ballots get in the right boxes or, or a way to divvy them up afterward. Like some kind of supervisory, you know, like yes. someone has to be responsible at the student center for this process or whatever. You know, there are multiple districts even on campus. And so it, we don't want to expect the students to know which one they have to put their oh. particular ballot in. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. You could advertise at the university, for example, you could advertise ballot collections will be, you know, there'll be a BCA member at uh, the student center at X time, and then they can tell you which box to put it in. Your law actually pretty much allows for that already with what are known as mobile polling stations. But yes, it's a great idea. Right, great. So that we could work on. Okay, great. <clears throat> All right, so does anybody have any concerns about, I do think it's probably unnecessary, but it sends a message. And I think this bill is important enough to get out that I, if it caused any delay or any angst, I would not want to do anything about it. Anybody else? I'm fine with it. 
Okay. All right. Anthem I agree with. Anthem. Well, I agree. With, I agree with what Allison was saying before. I think it's unnecessary. Obviously, we all think it's unnecessary, and it's sort of pandering towards a perspective that we should try to avoid. On the other hand, I don't think we should delay the bill. I just think it's, you know, I, I so I say okay with regret, you know. Yes, I would I'm, like to really support it. I might, I mean, I, I really just think like, I have had over 25 voter registration forms in my hand. I might collect them over a few days to help people access the ballot. And, you know, volunteers do that in, in communities where there's a lot of people who aren't otherwise going to the ballot box. I would increase it to 50. If we've increased it to 50, we would have to wait for it to come from the House because they haven't passed it yet. We would not get it until next Wednesday, probably, oh, or oh. Tuesday. They haven't passed it out of the House yet. It's voting. It's, it's sec, it's, oh, it's second reading today. It's not third reading today. Third reading today. Third. I think it's third. It's third. We reading. would get it. We would get it on um, Friday. Friday. Um, we would couldn't do anything with it. We could change it. We could do something Friday, and, and then it. send it back to them. I I think this is putting a real. Um, uh, first of all, I will say that voter. This does not have anything to do with voter registrations. You can collect as many of them as you want. Right, but it, and turn them in. This is ballots cooler. only. Yeah. So I have turned in many voter registrations at the same time. Yeah. No, we all have. I mean, that's but we... but if I had somebody's ballot, I'm not I'm gonna turn it in right away. I'm not gonna sit on them and collect 25 or 30 of them and then go down and turn them in because I don't want to be responsible for those ballots. I'm gonna turn them in the minute I pick them up. But so this is like 25 at a time, like. You just well, take you, 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 take no, you keep track of it yourself. If right. you want to do 50, unless somebody complains about it, there's not it it's it okay. Is I a, mean, if we all agree this is a useless provision, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's useless. I just think it's, it's really useless. I don't want to be characterized as saying that it's useless or that we're pandering to anybody. I think. I'm taking Will Senning's position that it's a good middle ground and uh, I'll support the amendment, but I'm not supporting changing it. I think if we try to change it, we are gonna screw this bill. That's my, my feeling because I don't know how much time government operations will have. If we get it on Friday and we vote it out on, we send it back to them even on Friday, they won't get it till Tuesday. And I don't know if they're even going to meet after that. And then it would have to go back to the House floor anyway. I, right. I think it's a death knell for the if we do anything. That's fine. As long as an avid, you know, volunteer who helps people vote is not, you know, implicated in something. I think that would be a shame. It just, I think the challenge for some of us is that it just verges on, on vote suppression. That's all. I'm just going to say it. And it's. It, it verges on it and it's, as Mrs. Bennett in Pride and Prejudice would say, she's teetering on the brink. <laughs> and I just think that that's where our concern is. Right. Well, I, I don't like it particularly, but let's in um, the next time we have an election, let's look at it and see if it was an issue for anybody. If somebody um, felt that they had to put on the cloak and dagger to run down to the town clerk's office with their 27th ballot, or if anything happened as a result of this. And um, so I, while I don't think it's necessary, I think it's, um, I don't want to see this bill. Right. It's expedient for, at the moment. Uh, uh, right. I think we're just wanting to register our concern. I got that. I just I, I I was reacting to Keisha's suggestion that we change it to fifty. I, I and I might be wrong that that would really um, not get this bill passed. I think you're probably right. 
and our time, it's we have a, a week and a half. So I think we all have to be cognizant of what we want to accomplish this year. We're right with you. Okay. All right. So the third, the other issue was, oh, that uh, rep that report. What, was it the report, the Madam Chair? Was it the database comparison? And before that, it's the curing of the ballots. Okay, well, let me go back to the report. It was um, when the report said they, that the Secretary of State should report on a, a voter identification system that could be implemented that didn't uh, disenfranchise voters. The assumption right. is, and I, this is just an issue of mine all the time, is that we've made the assumption that we should have one. And it, I would rather have it say whether or not we should have a voter identification system, but I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna do anything about it because I think that it would, it's a, a little point and it's a pet peeve of mine, um, but I'm not gonna go there. Uh, Senator White. Just yep. to try and help, I totally understand that, but make you feel better too. If you read it really closely, right, the introductory language to what's in the report so says what, that- So what page are you on, Will? Uh, of the bill, it's, it's, it's very, way toward the end, page it's 35. the very last one. It says that we will come back with its findings and any recommendations for legislative action on. Yeah. And then number three is implementing a voter verification system. I just I know our findings and recommendations could be to do nothing. I yeah, I, I realize it that block I just, us into to definitely if I was if I was writing it, I would have said on whether or not there should be, and yeah. if so, how to implement. But I'm not gonna go there because I think it'll delay anything if I do. So Senator Clarkson. So sadly, I mean the term voter verification sadly now has, you know, again, voter suppression connotations. And I think that's the concern is that, is that asking, you know, like, do we have a problem with our voter verification now that's on the register, vote, voter register form? I don't think so. It, it, it's, it's, so I think that, I think your language would be an improvement. Um, voter, anyway, just to me sort of again, is taking us in the direction of voter ID stuff, which makes me a little anxious. Well, remember any recommendations they come back with have to have to be implemented by us. Yeah. That, that's right, Madam Chair. We're we're comfortable with the language. We there was a lot of discussion in the House as there was here in the Senate about signature verification. And, and how that has the potential to disenfranchise some voters and how it's an, a very imperfect solution to a, a problem that we have yet to see evidence of. Um, so right. we're gonna be very thorough in looking at other options at carefully weighing things like signature matching and our recommendation will give you a, a lot of information and a, and a lot of options to choose from. And one of the options may be to do nothing. Okay. So, maybe so, Mr. Clark, huh? Maybe we should create an option for people to update their signatures because, you know, uh, you know, something like that. I mean, there might be ways to update things. So Senator Clarkson, you wanted to go back to um, the- Curing the ballots. I, Cause I think we let, uh, as I recall, it, it sounded like the clerks had, uh, were okay with where they landed in the house, where they ended up landing. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, I can't speak for 246 clerks, but. Don't you dare. <laughs> no. That's your peril. Okay, so the, so the, the we're, are we all okay with the, what, what they landed on? It's a lot of, it's a lot. It's not as beautiful and simple as our <laughs> version, but it's. Well, I was, I was particularly um, concerned about the, the section that you ended up um, working out with uh, Representative Paella because, yeah. We'll work okay. very, we'll work closely with her uh, and with Carol Dawes and 
trying to to alleviate their the concerns that they had about you know, kind of a lack of clarity of what a reasonable attempt meant. Yeah. And they all seemed to be really satisfied with with what he had put together with the committee and with uh, Representative McCarthy's amendment that passed yesterday. Okay. All right. So other, what are the other um, amendments? Just out of curiosity. Sure. The um, the there was another amendment from Representative Toof to require local uh, oh. mail ballots yeah. for all Australian ballot towns in oh. 2024. And, and so again, we kind of came back with our response was, you know, we're, we're going to report back in January 2023, you'll have more information, we'll have another couple of elections under our belt, we'll have the towns that did um, do mail, in, mail out balloting for all their local elections, we'll get data from them, their experiences. This is a decision that the, that the legislature really doesn't have to make right now in mandating local mail out balloting in 2024. So that was rejected by the committee and uh, the House GovOps committee and was just rejected on the House floor as well by a, a pretty strong vote over 100 in favor, I'm pretty, pretty sure, of, of rejecting that amendment. Uh, and then they next are, they are right now, I believe, considering Representative Strong's amendment that is to delay all of the vote by mail provisions for this, for the general election until 2024. So everything that's in S15 uh, that relates to uh, mailing out ballots for a general election would not be in place for 2022, but would start in 2024 under her proposal. Uh, that was also soundly rejected by the House Government Operations Committee and is being debated on the House floor right now. And then the third amendment there is the McCarthy Amendment that uh, fixes Senator Collimore's uh, catch there on, on electronic return of ballots. All right, so committee, assuming that they will send us, um, look at see, this is third reading. So they'll send us, and my guess is that they won't be able to suspend rules. So we will get it on Friday. Um, and we'll get it Friday morning. Um, it, it would be on the Senate calendar on Friday morning or Tuesday. I'm not sure the timing here, probably Tuesday, right? For, um, because if we don't get it till Friday, they can't put it on the Senate calendar until Tuesday. And then um, are we okay with, um, assuming that they don't make any other changes except uh, Senator or Representative McCarthy's um, amendment about the electronic, um, response, are we okay with um, accepting their changes? Yeah. Um, yes or no? Yes, I think I'm, I, I'm I very discouraged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, not happily, but you know, I would like to see the bill pass this year and I have a lot of thoughts about January. Me too. All right, okay. So wh whenever it appears on the, on the um, calendar, we'll accept their changes. Okay. Anything else? So. Yes. I, I'm off to get my second shot. Oh, great. Well, good luck, good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks very much, you guys. Bye, Thanks. thank you. Mm -hmm. Senator Clarkson. So we would concur without further amendment. Yes. That's what you're proposing. And January is coming and we'll see how we, yeah, okay. We can't change anything about elections in January though. Well, we, we can change some things um, because you can't change things like campaign finance and major changes during a, um, because we're already into that election cycle. Right. But, but we can make um, administrative changes. Um, the, the, the problem with making changes 
during next year is that if there are changes that um, imp have a huge impact on the town clerks, that's a real problem. And if their campaign finance changes, they can't be made because we're already in that cycle. But other than that, Chris, I think that um, we can make uh, tweaks and small administrative changes. That's right, Senator. We try to only come to you every every, every other year in the off years for, for changes, but you're right. As long as it's not um, a change to like a deadline or something that requires a system change or a lot of clerk training, or candidate or voter outreach, um, then we would, we, we're fine to tinker around the edges with those sort of things in an election year. Mm -hmm. So in January, if we, if people have ideas, we'll, we'll talk about them then. Okay. I just can't Thank believe you. that the clerks would be, think that this new way of curing ballots is an improvement over what we sent them. It just I seems can't. crazy. I can't either. What we sent them was so much simpler. Yeah. Just to try to clarify a little bit. So they, we thought the same thing. We thought give them flexibility, um, but there was real concern, a real, I guess they didn't um, pay attention to the bill as much in the Senate as they did in the House as it's coming to the floor, kind of becoming a reality. And they all started talking on their, on their listserv. And there was real concern about unequal treatment across towns and wanting explicit guidance. Like, I don't wanna get in trouble for not going too far and I don't want someone to go much farther for, for their town than we go in, in the next town over. Um, so they wanted more clarity and not the flexibility. So that's kind of how we ended up where we, where we did on that. And we think we satisfied most clerk's concerns through that amendment. That's interesting because I understood it um, that the changes that the house made gave them more flexibility that ours just said, send out a postcard, end of story. And the, the, that that gave them a real baseline and, a re, and an action. And that the house version gives them more flexibility to make decisions, which they didn't want. And actually it might result in different towns doing things differently. It was that last five days, the postcard all stayed the same right up until that, that last five days. What, what did it mean to make a reasonable attempt to contact the voter? And they wanted explicit guidance that I only I, I need to go to my checklist, I need to go to the elections management system, and I don't need to be you know, looking through other town records or searching Facebook or you know, whatever it might be to try to reach that voter, especially in those last five days, which were real crunch time for them right before an election. So that's the kind of clarity that they were looking for, which we would have given them, I think, in the in our elections guidance and our procedures, the bulletins that Will sends out constantly. But um, they wanted it laid out right there. Uh, enough of them wanted that laid out right there. Again, you can't can't speak for them all as as a as a one unit. Um, a lot of different opinions among the town clerks, but we think this satisfied the majority of their concerns and gave them some clarity. So it was only within the last five days that they, okay, I get it. Yeah, but then there was more change about being able to cure by affidavit. That was something that yeah. came up. The National Vote at Home Institute recommended um, and the house took up and, and added that ability. The postcard can also have a return affidavit right. so that you don't have to get another ballot and, and totally revote. You can just put in the affidavit that says, yes, this is me. Yes, I'm, I'm fixing the, the defect and I, I do want to vote. Yeah. All right, committee, are we okay with the elections bill? I'm sorry they never took up um, our other elections bill, but our campaign finance bill. Yeah, what's happening with that? Nothing. Nothing. January, we're gonna put the big squeeze on them for January. Yeah. Oh, they, can't, they can't pass it in January. No. They could pass it, but for the next election cycle. Right, so it would be good two years from then. Yeah. Okay. So S-15 is a great bill. It's still a great bill. And I really appreciate all of your work on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It is. I, I think we're very proud of it.